All right. It's just about, uh, I don't know, 2.30, almost 3 o'clock in the morning here. And I'm going to get going real shortly because uh, I'm going on a little bit of road trip to Philadelphia. It's about six hours each way. But uh, this motor got absolutely baked in the uh, fire. And uh, I got to get something together for this thing before too long. So we're going to run this motor this weekend. And uh, we'll be running it for a little while longer. But eventually, um, I got to get something that's a little bit happier between these frame rails. But right now, um, I'm working on some of the sub harnesses for the electrical system. Now, uh, I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you some of that stuff uh, as to um, what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, so on and so forth. But this is a cell phone shop video, and uh, it's not going to be that great. And I'm sorry for that, but I need to order up some GoPros um, since my uh, last GoPro went uh, disappearing at dig or die for whatever reason or not. But um, this is going to be the sub harness for like the rear of the car. It's got my drive shaft speed sensor on it. It's got a Deutsch connector on it. I built all this stuff uh, this evening. Well, shortly after I got off of work, took a little nap, then uh, came over here and started working on it. Now, uh, another huge shout out to uh, good friend Don Foss for letting me um, park the car in his garage, in his shop while I do uh, try to get some stuff together since the house is gone. I no longer have a garage. Now, don't get me wrong, it's freaking cold in here. Um, the heater doesn't keep up. Uh, it's just a little propane heater. But, hey, I've worked in worse conditions, I promise you that. So, um, we just didn't film any of that stuff back then. So, these connectors right here, this is going to be a sub-harness, right? This is going to plug into the harness that goes into my Holly EFI system. And uh, this right here is for the front of the car. And uh, you could sign. I'll show you. Kind of, you can kind of see it hanging down there. Um, that's the harness for the back of the car, okay? We have, uh, right now we have a solid yellow, solid blue sensor wires, okay? And then there's a, there's another splice connector like this one here, right? These orange wires here are five volt signal wires. Um, the black ones here are uh, sensor grounds, okay? Sensor grounds and uh, normal grounds are not the same. Uh, sensor grounds are a very clean ground, used for, uh, used for uh, different uh, sensors that you have on the car. Um, I have multiple sensors on the car from uh, dome pressure to shock travel sensors to speed sensors and so on and so forth. Now in the back of the car, I did it so it's solid yellow and uh, solid blue for the uh, travel sensor and for the speed sensor. In the front, I wanted to keep the colors uh, similar, so I went white with a blue stripe and uh, white with a yellow stripe for the front of the car. I have a wheel speed sensor on the front tire and on the drive shaft, okay? And you could do some stuff with correlations and stuff like that through the advanced tables in the Holly EFI system to be able to do some power management and whatnot, okay? So uh, we also have a couple green wires on this harness because uh, I'm running uh, on this transmission. I have uh, one of the low dollar sensors on there that is a pressure, uh, pressure and temperature combo sensor for the trainees. Um, we're running the uh, dump valves and stuff like that. We're dealers for uh, Hughes, and we're probably going to be dealers for Low Dollar Motorsports here shortly as well. But um, we run the dump valves um, to help manipulate the converter. So um, knowing that uh, pressure and the, uh, the temperature is uh, crucial, to, especially in a turbo car, um, we tend to heat up the uh, fluid. But we do run a training cooler on this car. Um, we will be driving this thing quite a bit on the street, but it's good information to know. So, um, as far as uh, basic sensors on a car, um, shock travel sensors, that gets into a little bit more detailed, but um, basic sensors is you're going to want to run at least a, a drive shaft speed sensor on the car. Um, you could use that um, huge aids for tuning. Um, I do some stuff also in the math, channel, math channels in the EFI system, so uh, I could uh, synchronize... Um, different things with the engine RPM. So uh, that's just some uh, advanced stuff that I'm not going to get into in this video because this is basically just a rundown of what I'm doing and uh, a little bit of a wire and tech tips for you and so on and so forth. So um, as far as uh, sensor grounds go and uh, five volt references for those sensors, right? I, you'll see I have um, this is a 12 pin Deutsch connector that I ordered up through the low dollar motorsports. Um, and it's got four orange wires, four, orange, four black ones, and then the four signal wires in the center, okay? And those, these four orange ones go into a single orange wire because um, you could link up 10, 12 sensor wires uh, to the same pin on the ECU. Now on the Holly system, um, each, uh, each connector 
has at least one uh, five volt and one uh, sensor ground wire to them. So you can go and add a splice like this to each connector and uh, there's other ways to do it. You could link them up through uh, different splices. But uh, I like to do it this way because, uh, I don't know, it's a little bit easier. Um, now, this is the connector that goes directly to the ECU um, on that side, right? So that one comes right into here on the ECU, and it comes in here, and this goes into my sub-harness that goes into the car. Now, this sub-harness right here is what I'm talking about, okay? This has my, uh, this one is speed and uh what is that one? Oh, speed and travel on this sensor here. Um, I have a label maker, but I don't know where it is right now. So this is speed and travel on here, and you'll see that there's, um, on this one there's actually three red wires and uh, three black wires on this side, okay? Because um, on the low dollar motorsports, on the, uh, on the pressure sensor, there's two sensors in one, and you could tie the sensor grounds together since they're not uh, they're not signal wires, okay? But that is basically a sub harness, and that goes up to the front of the car. I also have the one in the back of the car that I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get to right now because my phone's like dead. I tried to take this video like three times now, and I gotta get on the road. But, uh, all right guys, a quick rundown before I hit the road here to go pick up my parts. Um, I'm gonna go show you, uh, like here, this is my drive shaft speed sensor right here. All right, I need to go through and do it. And uh, is it tiger? Yep. So these are uh, the rotor bolts here. If you can see them, okay. The uh, sensor right there, it's kind of hard to see like this. But that sensor right there picks up those rotor bolts as it passes through. Now there's like a 20, 30 thousandths gap in there and it should be uh, significant. Then here's, uh, that right there is the connector that I make, made for and the harness that goes through. Um, then we got, Let's see here. I disconnected and we're gonna hope for the best. And then uh, here's the harness for the rear of the car. This one connects uh, directly to the ECU and um, all these uh, solid colors here in the center, the four centered ones, those are uh, those go directly to the pins on the ECU. And then uh, the sub harness up here, um, we'll go to the back of the car. That's the one I'm working on up here. This guy right here. So, um, that's the harness. This is my, uh, this is the shock sensor. That's uh, my drive shaft speed sensor. Now, um, you'll see that on the, uh, like on the rear harness and on the front harness, I have both male and female connectors, okay? Now I'm gonna add this in here real quick. I'm adding this to the video. So I run male and female connectors, okay? Because I don't wanna have two male uh, three pin connectors or two uh, three pin female connectors um, or of any sort, okay? Two of the same connectors on the on the sub harness okay um even if they're different lengths if you have someone else underneath the car or if you're in a rush or something like that it is uh possible and uh somewhat likely to get those uh mixed up in the car okay and get the wrong sensor plugged in now it won't do no damage to the ecu or anything like that but you lose your data and uh data is very important when you're trying to compete uh or uh refine refine what you're working with so um, you'll see that um, when I'm doing stuff or uh, I don't like it because it's not cons it's not uh, consistent looking, right? But by doing a male and female uh, mix on the same harness, it will makes it so you can't uh, mix it up, right? So we generally use uh, two pin, three pin, four pin, six pin, eight pin, and 12 pin connectors, um, Deutsch connectors um, or weather pack connectors. But I do it males and females so you can't flip flop them, okay? I also do it with my weather pack connectors when um, their uh, outputs to like, let's say um, your uh, radiator fan and your uh, electric water pump and that are in close proximity to each other. Um, you don't want to be able to um, turn on your water pump and you're actually turning on your fan without knowing it because the connectors are flip flopped. Okay. So that's just something to pay attention to while you're doing this stuff. Now I just op updated the software today or firmware in the uh, ECU to V6 because the main, uh, the main uh, global file, the uh, tune-up that I built for the 33 for dig or die was on V6. And then uh, I realized that, hey, the ECU was on V5. And uh, came up with a V5 tune-up real quick. So uh, that is is what it is, right? 
So I think we'll be in better shape here. Um, got some other stuff ironed out. And now uh, I'm getting ready to hit the road. And uh, I should be back here, I don't know, 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Maybe take a little bit of a nap. It's snowing out right now. It's supposed to, the weather is supposed to be pretty crappy. But um, i got a couple other little things to do. And I'm hoping that we get to go racing this weekend. So, guys, I know the video was a little, little eh-eh. There's uh, not much editing on it. So, uh, it's kind of raw until I get some, uh, buy a GoPro and stuff like that. So, self-filming ain't easy. But, um, if you guys have any questions about any of the electrical stuff or this or that, um, ask me. Um, Devin Vanderhoof on uh, YouTube, he's one of the best electrical guys out there for, especially for the Holly stuff and EFI stuff. Um, he's pretty damn good at this stuff. Now, uh, most of my stuff works, but, um, that guy is very detail oriented. Um, about walking through the whole steps, right? I'm not trying to make this a tech video. I'm basically just trying to walk through and give you guys a little bit of tips and uh, basically give you a little bit of rundown of what we're doing, what I'm doing here, and uh, give you a little bit of an update. So, guys, I appreciate all of you that follow along. Um, if you feel like it, like and subscribe. If you don't, I'll do the shit anyways because I love it. So, I'll see you all soon. It's 3.30 in the morning. Not a soul inside, sitting looking goat like a ghost town on a lonely Tuesday night. But we're headed to go get some race car parts and uh, I'm pretty excited. Uh, we got 75 miles on the trip odometer on the good old Buick that I uh, picked up recently. Uh, just as a little get around car and uh, when I'm able to hit the road I'll probably give it to my grandma because this thing is a clone to the car that she used to have when I was growing up and she loved the damn thing and uh, she's just not uh, in the means to get another one. So um, I got a good deal on it. Um, I actually bought it off my brother who got it off of a friend of his or something like that. It's only got 100,000 miles on it. So, uh, it's a it's, it's a decent rider. Now, uh, I'm not a big guy, so the seats are a little bit stiff. So, we'll see how it's going to work out on this, uh, I don't know, 13-hour ride or something like that. I'm headed over to Cook Brothers um, first to drop off my drive shaft. I got that in the back seat. Uh, with the way I did the rear suspension on the car, it's, uh, it's quite adjustable. It's a really adjustable rear suspension. And the way that uh, I'm able to adjust the bars and stuff like that. Um, it gets a little bit tight on the, uh, on the, uh, it, the drive shaft is a little bit long. I screwed up a little bit, okay? That's the main, that's the gist of it. So, uh, not by much. Um, I'm probably gonna have them knock off a quarter inch or something like that, just for a little extra security, a little extra insurance um, for when I go and make my uh, adjustments on the uh, rear suspension setup. So, um, right now I'm headed to Rochester first because um, I've tried um, pretty much every drive shaft shop in Buffalo and uh, yeah it's worth a drive now unfortunately they don't do chrome mile drive shafts um, it's been a mild steel drive shaft in um, the 30 and in the 33 uh, we've gone pretty quick with it we haven't gone super fast with it um, a drive shaft or a carbon shaft would be ideal but a carbon drive shaft on the street um, when I say the street, I mean like uh, street type uh, racing. Um, it's kind of hard on this stuff. So, um, Chrome Molly would be ideal, but we just don't have one right now. So, so be it. Now, we got about, uh, with the snow rolling in, we got lake effect snow coming off the lake. And we got about four inches on the ground right now. But, um, hopefully... I'll get far enough away from the lake here before too long so it doesn't affect the rest of the trip. So I should be, it's 3.30 in the morning right now, 3.45 actually, and uh, I'm hoping to be home about 5 o'clock or so and uh, maybe nap for a couple hours in the backseat of this big old boat. Um, fortunately enough, it's big enough to fit some car parts in, so uh, hey. This wasn't it, but uh, man, I should have taken a video earlier. There are some beautiful homes through here. Some nice parks and stuff like that. At the next stop sign, turn right. Oh, shut up. But it is 11.30. I slept for about an hour or so. Um, 
in a gas station parking lot. Got my little rest in. Now we're ready to go uh, meet this guy. So hopefully everything works out. Hopefully we get our parts and hopefully we get back to uh, Buffalo. Another, uh, well we're at 493. So that's 400 and holy crap, over 400 miles already. Really? Damn. Well, guys, I've been on the road since like 3 o'clock this morning, and it is, I don't even know what time it is. That's like, I think it's like 5 or 6 o'clock in the afternoon already. So that's like, what, 12, 13, 14, 15 hours, something like that, 14, 15 hours. But I've never been out here, and uh, I'm at the Finger Lakes region, which is in central New York, and there's five or so lakes, and uh, it's pretty windy out here. But it's pretty freaking cool looking. It ain't all in, uh, all in, uh, ain't completely native, right? So, stop by, get a little bit of, a uh, little bit of scenery here, check it out. And, uh, as I was pulling in here, it looks like a pretty cool, uh, waterfalls on the other side. So I think we're gonna go shoot over there real quick and, uh, check it out before we hit on the road. Then go pick up my drive shaft and then either go straight back to working on the car or maybe I'll go take a nap for a little bit. Um, I'm pretty much beat, but yeah, uh, it's pretty cool out here. It'd be pretty nice in the summer. Right now, the water's nasty. Not nasty, it's pretty cold and windy and wavy. Hey, I don't even know where the hell I'm at. One of the bigger lakes. Somewhere in the center of New York. Uh, there's probably some pretty good fishing up in here. Coming up here in the next month or two. I would imagine. That's pretty freaking cool. I'd go down to that in a kayak, maybe. Let's see where the hell we are. Now, that's pretty crazy. Taconot Creek to these falls in the spring. Rainbow Trout. They don't want us going down there. They won't go down there because my feet are already wet. Pretty pretty cool. Well, guys, I think they can make a movie out of this shit show. Now, pardon my language, but. This GPS literally had me on a stone road, okay? Now, I kinda wanna go back and jump in that friggin' waterfalls, cause I'm like heated, like. I'm 200 miles from home, 200 miles. Why the hell is a GPS bringing you down a dirt road? I wanna be driving like 70, 75 miles an hour on the way home so I can get home and get some stuff done, or at least get some sleep or something, right? But no. Nope. The GPS, turn left here. That's a dirt road. Well, like, don't get me wrong, I don't mind dirt roads, but not when I'm trying to get home. I'm literally like, Husa! Is that how that goes or something like that? Freaking crazy. Like, ugh. I got my parts though, and they're pretty freaking nice. I gotta sell some of them. Cause I don't need all of them. Recoup some of my money. Sell some of the stuff that I was gonna use so I could use the parts that I did get. And I should be into these new parts for uh, essentially no money out of pocket. Because I had good parts and I got a good deal on these parts. So today probably wasn't the day to do the trip, but I had to do the deal, right? If you make a deal with someone, you make a deal with someone. So I'm trying to go racing 
Friday. Today's Wednesday. Yeah, six o'clock in the afternoon. I'm trying to go racing Friday. Well, testing Friday. Racing Saturday. I got a lot of work left to do on the car. And I ain't there yet. So, maybe. Maybe I'll be all bust butt tomorrow. But I don't like banking on that. I don't like rushing it like that. All right? My goal was to do some testing tomorrow. In two miles, keep right. But it's still snowing at home. So, I don't freaking know. We're running out of time. I just want to race the car a couple times before I have to go in for my surgery. At least once. I don't know. I'm not sure what the bigger picture is right now. I don't. I'm trying to see it though. I really am. Damn, that place is beautiful. You do? I hear got some money. I could probably have one of these houses too if I didn't race for the last 15 years. <laughs> That's okay though. Houses don't make me fancy. Oh my god, look at this. Woo! I hope y'all can see it. I mean, it was pretty nice looking. There's some really big homes out here. But we shall see. Continue straight. Then use the right lane to keep right. Oh, thanks, GPS. I kind of don't want to listen to you anymore. Because you steer me in the wrong direction. Like a bad influence. Kind of like a bad click in high school or something like that. But hey, I can't really walk my own path right now because I get lost too. Use the right lane to keep right. I'm in freaking Waterloo. That's four hours from home. Jesus Christ. I'm literally not going to get home till like 11 o'clock. Keep right. Then take a slight right turn onto Waterloo Geneva Road. Whoops. Take a slight right turn onto Waterloo Geneva Road. Slight right. We all good. Well, guys, I just saw a sign that said New York State Thruway that way. So we're going that way because I'm sick of driving down these dirt roads and these back roads and I got some expensive parts in the back of the car that should you hear them bouncing around in the trunk and stuff like that now they're all packaged up and stuff like that wrapped up but Jesus like come on now if I would have had the bus and like the car trailer with me I would have been livid like literally livid I'm literally driving through like people's neighborhoods and stuff like that I'm 200 miles from home you should not be driving through people's neighborhoods when you're 200 miles away from your destination. You do that stuff when you're like five miles away from your destination. Not 200. I'm literally not going to get home till like 11 o'clock at night, midnight. I slept like... So I got off of work at 8 o'clock in the morning. Yesterday. Slept for a couple hours. Like two or three hours. Worked on the car all day. Left at 3.30 in the morning. And then... At the next light, turn left. I slept from about 7 o'clock in the morning till about 8 o'clock in the morning in a gas station park lot, just in the back seat back there. And uh, got my nice little nap in. And I was like, okay, we're, we're doing all right here. I'll be able to make it home by, you know, 5, 6 o'clock at the latest. And I'll be in good shape. But I am 7 miles away from Waterloo. Okay? Waterloo is like not close. It's at least three and a half hours from home. So, I'm debating about going home. Well, I don't really have a home anymore. Going to my mom's for a little bit. Sleeping on the couch for four hours. And then... At the light, to use the left lane to merge onto I-90. <gasps> it's the 90! That's like the main road. So, do that. Either sleep at my mom's on the couch for like four hours. Turn left. Well, guys, the trip odometer says 920 miles. We left with 
75 if I remember correctly. So that's like an 850 mile trip. And I'm telling you, this 850 mile trip today is a whole lot worse than that 3,200 mile trip that I made last week. I got back last Thursday, a week ago from today. And uh, between Tuesday night and Thursday, I did 3,200 miles, 26 of them, 2,600 in the bus and another 600 in the rental car to go look at a trailer. Now, um, with the surgery and stuff like that, I love my bus, I really do, I love the school bus. Um, that thing's been awesome, uh, literally an awesome, awesome vehicle. I like my 36 foot trailer, but with the surgery and the repercussions for the surgery, um, I'm kind of looking into a diesel pusher motorhome, um, something with like the 8.3 Cummins or a big cat motor in it, I prefer 8.3 Cummins. Ideally, I'd have a Detroit 60, um, and a stacker trailer because I'm not going to be able to lift things um, for quite a while. Um, I'm not going to have the strength that I normally do. So um, I'm looking for a stacker trailer and uh, I'm looking for a toter home since that's going to be my house so I don't have to sleep on my mom's couch no more. <laughs> no, but uh, it's all good. I wasn't planning on this lasting uh, more than a week or two, but hey. Someone that has more pull than me had other plans, so so be it. We ain't racing full time right now. We're gonna be healing up from a surgery. But hey, it is what it is. Gotta roll with the punches. So guys, as always, I appreciate you all following along on the journey. Um, I'm sorry these videos are a little bit raw right now. Um, I'm gonna work on my editing skills and stuff like that. I've been trying to find a couple classes or some people to. That really know what they're doing to teach me but um once i get on the road i'll have a little bit of time to uh meet up with some people that could uh, show me the ropes a little bit better on the editing software um we do have the editing software it's just difficult so um i'm gonna put a little clip at the end of this video right here of uh the stuff i picked up but i got all my parts um i dropped off uh, a couple parts over at don's house before i came here and I even picked up myself some takeout. Um, I don't usually do that, but uh, it was a long day. And I haven't eaten since yesterday. So I don't eat a lot with my stomach issues. So I'm feeling hungry. And hopefully I can eat the whole damn thing. So I'm going to hit the hay. Eat. And then hit the hay. And uh, hopefully, I'm going to set my alarm for like 6, 6.30 in the morning. And uh, hopefully get over there and start working on the car around 7, 7.30 in the morning. And put in a long day before I have to go into work Thursday night. So we're going to see how it goes. Thank you all for following along.